So I'd like to welcome you all uh, today to the State of Scranton seminar, a webinar version. My name is Julie Schumacher-Cohen. I'm Assistant Vice President for Community Engagement and Government Affairs here at the University of Scranton. We are very excited uh, to have Congressman Matt Cartwright here today to share with us highlights of the American Rescue Plan, a plan that we know will have broad impact in response to the pandemic and across many issues and sectors affecting our economy and our community. Special thanks to the university co-sponsors uh, for this event, Faculty and Staff Senate, Center for Service and Social Justice and the Jesuit Center, the Elo Korea Initiative and the Political Science Department. And welcome to all of our attendees, University of Scranton faculty, staff and students. I'm very glad to have members of the greater Scranton area community uh, joining us as well. Today's webinar is going to go until about 1245. It's going to include a uh, greeting from University Acting President, uh, Jeff Gingrich, opening com comments from Congressman Cartwright, some initial questions from three of our University of Scranton students, and then additional Q&A from the audience. So at any time during today's webinar, you can use the Q&A feature that's on the bottom right of your Zoom screen, and you can ask a question that way. And we'll do our best to get to as many questions as possible. Um, so first, I'm, going, I'm pleased to introduce um, the acting president of the University of Scranton, Jeff Gingrich. Dr. Gingrich has served as provost of the university since 2018. He joined us most recently from Cabrini University in Philadelphia, and he will serve as acting president until Father Joseph Marina of the Society of Jesus joins us uh, as the 29th University of, of Scranton president in June. Dr. Gingrich. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate everyone coming out today for this important seminar and a very special thank you to our friend Representative Matt Cartwright and his staff for taking the time out of out of your very busy schedule to talk to us uh, about these important issues. Uh, you know, I think all of us today understand the importance of higher education in, in today's world and but it's not not only for the success of our of our students and our alums, which is so core to what we do here, but really also for building a stronger community and nation. And it's clear to, not, clear to all of us that we can't be successful at the University of Scranton unless our city and our region and our nation are also successful. And so working together in partnerships and discussions with, with government and community partners is really vital to what we do. And, and I, I think most of us know that this was something that Father Scott Pilars, our, our past president, believed in so deeply. And so we carry that tradition in that practice with us today as well. Um, we've been really fortunate to have great communication and support from Representative Cartwright's office and are, are so grateful for that. Uh, these partnerships have become even more important during the COVID pandemic, as you all know. Again, we've only been able to be successful this year amidst all the challenges because we work together internally and externally and have received such great support. And so I wanna especially express our deep appreciation for all the work that Representative Cartwright put into the American Rescue Plan. This has been uh, uh, vital for us th this entire year and pr for providing support for higher education as part of that. At the, at the university, we estimate approximately around $7 million that was split between student grants for students who really needed it the most and institutional aid to address a lot of the expenses and the shortfalls that, that we did not anticipate prior to the pandemic. And so we're, we're really so grateful for this. It's such, such an important part of our success. So thanks again. I look forward to a great discussion today, including some uh, wonderful questions from our some of our students. And I'll turn it back to Julie. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. And so again, we're very excited to welcome Congressman Cartwright. Of course, many of you, of you know who he is. Um, you have a longer bio included on the flyer, so I'm not going to do, do that entirely, but I'll just say briefly, he is the US representative for Pennsylvania's 8th Congressional District, our district here in Scranton, a position that he's held since 2013. He serves on the powerful House Appropriations Committee and is the chairman for the subcommittee uh, for Commerce, Justice, and Science. He's also a co-chair of the House Democratic Policy and Communications Committee. And as I was getting ready to get on the call today, I was recalling, Congressman, that the last time you were on our campus was for a lovely evening, pre-pandemic, with the uh, Irish ambassador to the United States, with a very full room of many Scrantonians. So we hope those kinds of in-person gatherings are you know, in the not too distant future for us, and hopeful that the American Rescue Plan is part of what will help us get there. So welcome, Congressman Cartwright. Well, thank you, Julie, and yeah, that was uh, that was a wonderful time. Uh, Ambassador Dan Mulhall joined us at the at the U, and uh, uh, we had a we had a wonderful visit. In fact, uh, uh, he stayed at my house 
uh, you know, he stayed in our guest room, which is now known as the ambassadorial suite, of course. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, for inviting me uh, to discuss the American Rescue Plan. Um, you know, uh, it's um, it's a necessity. It's not. Uh, I, I come here not to celebrate the American Rescue Plan as much as to explain it and to talk about why it's necessary. Uh, we we would not have done this uh, if it were not for this horrendous COVID uh, pandemic in this country. And um, uh, you do what you have to do. It's been uh, more than a year now, of course, since COVID-19 turned up on American shores. It's almost impossible to grasp the pain and wrap your head around the hardship that we've endured individually and as a people as a whole. We stand witness to the tragedies that, that have overcome our communities, the loss of family members, the loss of friends, um, the loss of businesses and jobs that went with it. Um, but we've also re uh, witnessed the, the resilience and the resolve of the American people throughout all of this. The scientists and the healthcare workers, the teachers and caregivers, the grocery store workers and the delivery truck drivers. Hardworking Americans have continued to clock in during this pandemic and have helped us find our way forward. Um, and that's who I think of in, in Washington as I work to direct relief back home to Scranton and communities across Northeastern Pennsylvania. The ARP, the American Rescue Plan delivers that relief and is also is already helping get shots in arms, money in pockets, uh, people in jobs and children back in schools. We knew we would need everything in our arsenal to beat this virus and ensure everybody's economic well-being. Uh, I, I'm very happy that we got this passed in Congress uh, and, and that President Biden signed it into law. This is the national comprehensive plan that our country needs to help us recover. Uh, it is the responsible thing to do. It is the grown-up thing to do, and we did it. And I'm bullish. I'm very confident, feeling very strongly optimistic about the days ahead. Uh, but truly, to get our economy back on the road to that recovery, we have to crush the virus first. We're, uh, we're not over the goal line yet. We're not out of the woods. And if I can think of a third way to mix that metaphor, I'll let you know. Experts tell us that the virus continues to mutate. And in the last week, we've seen an uptick in cases. That's why getting shots in arms is at the top of the list, because We've got, we've got to immunize people before that mutation uh, gets a chance to take hold. Uh, if you immunize people, then, then uh, the, the virus doesn't get a chance to, to change itself and make itself uh, stronger and more deadly. The, the American Rescue Plan invests $20 billion in a coordinated vaccine program nationwide and make sure we have enough vaccines for all Americans. We get them out quickly enough through community and mass vaccination sites and mobile units. Uh, we've seen that. We just uh, this weekend we had a, a max va mass vaccination up on uh, at the pavilion on Montage Mountain. Uh, uh, all credit uh, to uh, Delta Medics for helping do that. But it's more than just supply of vaccines. A critical step to achieving herd immunity is vaccine accessibility. We have to get Americans to the vaccine site. Many folks, especially senior citizens, rural community residents, and folks in rural places with spotty broadband, they don't know how to get vaccinated. And that's on us to make sure they know. That's why making investments to help our community health centers, the clergy, civic groups, and other trusted leaders communicate with the community and help them get shots to every American who wants it. We're already reaping the, the rewards of this investment right here in Scranton and across the district. I was proud to direct over, a mil over $11 million from the ARP to our area's federal community health centers, including 2.4 million for the Scranton Primary Health Center itself. Our local healthcare providers have been critical players in our response to the pandemic. 
This additional funding will help them expand COVID-19 vaccinations and treatment operations, while also ensuring uh, as much as you can ensure that they can keep staff on the payroll. We need every med tech, every nurse, every support staff, and the many heroes that work behind the scenes to keep these centers running effectively and efficiently. This is the funding they need to redouble their efforts to get shots in arms and ultimately save more lives from this horrible, ugly pandemic. We're on the right track. And as I say, I am optimistic about the progress we're making. President Biden and his team, they set a bold goal to get 100 million shots in arms by the end of April. But as you've seen from their style, they tend to under promise and over deliver. Uh, we are set to get actually 200 million shots in arms by the end of April. And by next week, every Pennsylvania adult will be eligible to receive a vaccine. Getting shots in arms and crushing this virus, that's the only way we're going to achieve long-term recovery. But Americans also need a right now plan, a plan to help them keep their roofs over their heads and their bills off of the counters. The, the ARP finishes that job on our promise to provide $2,000 in direct assistance to households across America with checks of $1,400 per person to supplement that $600 we did in December. That means a lower or middle income family of four will see an additional $5,600 in their pockets because of it. In Pennsylvania, 86% of adults are set to receive economic impact payments through the ARP, and I've been working to ensure every eligible Pennsylvanian gets the money he or she deserves. We've all already seen millions of Americans receive their stimulus checks, and just last week, the IRS, that agency everybody used to love to hate, they issued $3.6 billion in payments to Social Security recipients. That was last Wednesday. Look, this, this is money that is used to meet the most basic needs. I sent out a survey to, survey to constituents across Northeastern Pennsylvania, and folks are using their stimulus checks to pay medical expenses and cover prescription costs, to shore up savings after being laid off, and to help cover car payments so that they can get to work. This is the boost that the Americans that we think about, this is the boost that they need. But we know more is needed, especially for parents and children who over the past year have faced increasing childcare, education and food security challenges it has not been easy. And we recognize that more needed to be done for families in this fight against COVID-19. The American Rescue Plan, the ARP, will help childcare providers in our Commonwealth keep doors open and reduce costs for struggling families while expanding the child tax credit to help parents provide for their kids and combat the child poverty that has been dogging this nation for a generation. The historic expansion of the child tax credit will cut child poverty in half and deliver increased relief for 66 million families nationwide. To help our children recover, we have to get kids back in schools full-time and in person. Now this pandemic has disrupted Northeastern Pennsylvania students learning for too long. I pushed hard to include the school districts in the American Rescue Plan because they need the money. And homeowners are already stretched as far as you can stretch them. Some of our local school districts have been able to reopen, but it is not easy and it is not cheap. And we cannot put the burden on the local homeowners. The federal government has to step up and do its part. And that's what we did. That's why a core pillar of the American Rescue Plan was to provide nearly $130 billion to state education departments so schools can reopen safely, keep them open safely, make, make up time for lost time in the classroom and not put the burden on the local homeowners. Again, we're seeing the rewards that of that investment in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I was proud to announce that an estimated $270 million 
is coming back to Northeastern Pennsylvania, including over 38 million for the Scranton School District itself. Getting kids in schools is also about helping our post-secondary institutions get students back on campus for full-time in-person learning. Hands-on learning opportunities is a fundamental piece of a student's education and a core component of a university's model, especially for the University of Scranton. The American Rescue Plan allocates nearly $40 billion in funding to colleges and universities to help them recover from the overwhelming costs of managing a campus during uh, an international pandemic. I hope soon to be able to announce this relief funding heading to the University of Scranton and the many other colleges and universities in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Now, our investments in pre-K through 12 schools and universities is a turning point in our nation's fight against COVID-19. There is no doubt that getting children back in school will help parents get back to work. Because I know for many, with kids learning from home, parents working remotely took on 24-7 childcare responsibilities. That's like a, a second full-time job. And for others, the close for business sign went up and the lights went out. And I've heard from city officials who don't have enough funding to keep frontline public servants like police officers on the payroll. The American Rescue Plan will turn those lights back on, get people back in jobs, get those cops back on the beat, do what we need to do. So to do so, we have to invest in every nook and cranny and every sector of our economy. And that includes our local governments. In Washington, I push for relief for funding for counties and cities. I am thrilled that an estimated $300 million is on its way to Northeastern Pennsylvania with more coming to help pay for police departments, first responders, municipal waste collection, street and road repair, and the whole range of local government services we depend on. The pandemic created shortfalls in the revenue that normally pays for these things. And the answer is not to raise taxes on the local residents. It's for the federal government to assume the mantle of the rescuer, and that's what we did. The American Rescue Plan also provides critical support to help the hardest hit small businesses keep their, do their doors open, $15 billion in economic injury disaster loans, the EIDLs, an additional seven and a quarter billion dollars in PPP funding, $25 billion specifically targeted to revitalize restaurants, food and beverage establishments. With the investments made across the American Rescue Plan, Economists estimate that we can bring the economy back to near full, uh, full employment in a little over 12 months, creating approximately 7.5 million American jobs in 2021. That's why I'm optimistic. I think that's gonna happen. Without the American Rescue Plan, not so sure it would have. Without it, the Congressional Budget Office estimated it would take at least three years before employment returns to pre-pandemic levels. And that makes one thing very clear. The risk of doing too little was much worse than the risk of doing too much. Now, I have bogged you down with numbers uh, in, this, uh, in this little talk this, uh, this afternoon, and, and, and I am glad that I can do that. It means that uh, relief is here. If I didn't have numbers to talk about, it would have meant we were not able to, to pull it off. But let's not forget that behind these numbers is actual relief for our neighbors, for businesses, for families, and for hardworking Americans. It's shots in arms, money in pockets, people in jobs, kids back in schools. That's what this is about. And you have my word that I will keep fighting to direct aid back home to Northeastern Pennsylvania to ensure that we get our fair share of the federal relief that's going out in this country. And now to help us move forward, everybody has the responsibility to roll up their sleeves and get a vaccine. We cannot recover unless we win the race against the virus.
So I'm ready to, uh, to uh, turn it back to you, Julie. Well, thank you so much, Congressman. And it's really helpful to understand all the elements of the plan, which is obviously ambitious. And, and of course, the urgency for the vaccine rollout, which we all are responsible for participating in. So thank you for that. So we're going to move now to some questions from our uh, from three University of Scranton students, and I'll introduce them one by one. And then also want to remind the audience that you can uh, at any time now uh, offer your questions through the Q&A. So our first question is going to come from Chloe Burns. She is a senior and she majors in entrepreneurship. Chloe. Good afternoon, Congressman. As well as being a student at the U University of Scranton, I intern at the Women's Entrepreneurship Center, which is part of the Small Business Development Center on campus. So through my work, I've been able to work with many small business businesses in the region. My question is regarding the American Rescue Plan. It provides funding to the Small Business Administration in order to support and assist local small businesses. So how do you believe this will directly support and impact the local businesses in Northeastern Pennsylvania? Well, we thank you for the question. And it's a question that um, uh, other people have been asking and we've been answering. The business relief portion provided in the American Rescue Plan uh, really is more fulsome and more robust uh, than any of the previous COVID response packages. Uh, you remember last year we did the, uh, the CARES Act, uh, which provided a lot of business relief, but nothing like the, uh, the ARP is doing. Um, this ARP builds on some pretty hard lessons that we learned from holes we discovered. You know, when you, when you shut down an entire uh, national economy, you learn a, a lot about the, as I mentioned, the nooks and crannies of the American economy, the places that you hadn't been thinking about. You know, we learned about gig workers, for example, uh, people that, that don't work regularly, but, uh, you know, uh, they work in fits and starts uh, in different places. Um, and, and we learned all sorts of, of, of things about the, the way the American economy provides for its people. Uh, and, and, and we did a lot of backfilling filling with the ARP uh, doing that. We've renewed uh, the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, with over $7 billion. I mentioned that before. Uh, and expanded eligibility to more nonprofits than we covered before. Um, we added 15 billion, as I mentioned, to the EIDL program. Make sure that those who had issues receiving the full amount they deserved last year do get their fair share. We created a state small business credit initiative to support up to $100 billion in small business financing through state government programs, which can even, even be more targeted. Um, and there are two additions that I also want to tell you about uh, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Now, this is really important because uh, if you're paying attention, and I know you are, Chloe, the, uh, restaurants have been particularly hard hit in this pandemic because they're places where people gather. Um, and, and that's the whole business model is that you go to the restaurant uh, and a throng of people inside the restaurant uh, eat, drink, and have a good time. But in the middle of a pandemic, you can't do that. Um, and, and you had uh, elected officials in the unenviable position of having to issue orders to, to shut them down or make them uh, do only 25% or 50% occupancy. That is really hard on restaurants, uh, many of which really operate on very slim margins to begin with. Uh, it's a tough way to make a living. Uh, and so many of the people that, that own restaurants and run restaurants, they do that uh, because it's a passion. It's, it's not because they're in it to get rich. They weren't getting rich in the first place. And this pandemic comes along and we have to limit their, their occupancy. And uh, a lot of them uh, uh, were at grave risk of, of going under. Uh, and that's why the, re, the restaurant revitalization fund is so important. And the same thing applies to the the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Shuttered venues, we're talking about other places where people gathered, where people came together uh, and, and, and that we, you know, that suffered from those orders, those uh, stay at home orders uh, terribly. I mean, it was, uh, and, and if you think about it, the difference is a restaurant could do a takeout service, you know, could figure out a way to keep body and soul together by still cooking and delivering or having takeout. 
a shuttered venue. We're talking about theaters and places where uh, the arts are, are delivered to audiences. And without the audiences, there's nothing. There's no such thing as a, a take home uh, theater performance. So, uh, so that was a big part of the AR ARP too, the shuttered venue operators grant. Both of these things, uh, the uh, Restaurant Revitalization Fund and the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, they're both tailored funds specifically designed for two of the hardest hit sectors of our economy uh, and things that were such a big part of our daily lives before. Uh, so I, I, I was glad to see that those were included in the ARP and, and I was happy to vote for it. These are programs that are designed to make sure all of our businesses can survive and get back on their feet when we are ready to fully reopen our economy again. And that time is coming very soon. I'm very optimistic. Thank you for the question, Chloe. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. Um, we are very, we, we, can, we can think of all the wonderful restaurants in downtown Scranton. So this is really an important piece of the, the ARP. Um, our second question is from Marino Angeloni. He is a junior and he's a counseling and human services major. And he has a great ceiling with his lights up there. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Representative Cartwright, for your discussion of the American Rescue Plan. As one of your constituents in the Scranton area, and from my personal experience of working at the University Center for Service and Social Justice, as well as being a current intern with our local nonprofit organization, Friends of the Poor, I have seen firsthand the impact of poverty on families and individuals in the Scranton community. I've also seen how the pandemic has made already difficult situations harder for so many. My question to you is what features of the American Rescue Plan do you believe will have the greatest impact on helping people to manage their own personal cycles of poverty? And in which ways can this impact be sustained beyond the life of the American Rescue Plan? Well, thank you, Marino, and I, I like your background too. Are you in a planetarium there, young man? No, I'm in my room right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just pulling your leg. Thanks for the question, Marino. And um, uh, you're right, uh, the, the pandemic has been really, really hard on those least equipped uh, to deal with such things. Uh, it's deepened socioeconomic divides and disproportionately affected low and middle income families. Um, that's one of the reasons it, it, it made sense to fight for the ARP. It tackles poverty and it does it really um, in four ways, Marino. First, uh, it, it sends direct relief to Americans through economic impact payments. Now in Pennsylvania, 86% of adults and 84% of children are eligible for this third round of stimulus payments. Uh, stimulus payments is the key. I mean, it, it, this is about revitalizing and, and protecting, uh, you know, the American economy, which, you know, this is putting the American economy on life support, if you want to look at it that way, uh, and giving it a chance to, to, to bounce back. Uh, if we don't do that, you know, all of the economists uh, pretty much with one voice have said uh, our American economy uh, uh, was very much in danger of slipping into a Great Depression. Uh, and if you know anything about the Great Depression, you know about the lasting economic damage that that did, uh, not only to businesses, but to people's lives. Uh, I, I know my own parents were very deeply affected by the Great Depression and their, their, their psychological outlook the rest of their lives. Um, and, and you know it's our job to avoid this kind of thing. And the economists tell us that something like the American Rescue Plan, getting money into the economy, keeping the pump primed uh, was so important. Uh, and uh, the American Rescue Plan is just a, a vehicle to do it. And it sends money to the people that need it the most because they're going to spend it. They're not going to put it in their brokerage accounts. Uh, they're going to spend it on, on, on the local business in the local businesses that are teetering on the edge of going out of business. Uh, so that's a big piece of it. As I mentioned, uh, though that stimulus money um, means lower middle income family of four is going to see an additional $5,600 in their pockets uh, and, and already those checks are hitting the bank accounts. 
Now, uh, direct relief also comes in the form of unemployment insurance. Millions of Americans have lost their jobs or have their hours cut. American Rescue Plan extends the unemployment benefit of $300 per week for individuals laid off due to the pandemic to help them keep a roof over their head and food on the table. Uh, this is a little controversial because um, as the economy begins to open up again, you hear employers having a hard time getting a hold of uh, new uh, uh, employees to, to get back to work. And they, they blame the continuing uh, unemployment $300. That's going to be gone soon. And, you know, uh, you have a little bit of jaggedness in, in the way that uh, this works as we resume uh, economic activity. But I, I have no doubt that uh, supplementing income with that $300 was the right thing to do, is the right thing to do, um, uh, right, right up until we're able to, to restart the whole economy uh, in its entirety. Uh, again, they're not long-term fixes. They are helping ease the burden for families through this emergency we call a pandemic. Now, uh, secondly, the American Rescue Plan also makes an, a historic expansion of the child tax credit. Now, this is something not everybody knows about, but it's something that's been around for quite a while. The ch child tax credit helps support families with children and keep, um, keep families out of poverty, keep children out of poverty. As I said, parents and children have really been extraordinarily strained during this pandemic, this the ARP increased the child tax credit from where it was two thousand dollars a year per child to thirty six hundred dollars per child under age six, and for other children on up to the age of eighteen, three thousand um, dollars for for families. It also expanded eligibility to include children seventeen and under. What this does. Is this is uh, direct payments that will lift 140,000 Pennsylvania children out of poverty, um, and um, I, I, I would, uh, I, you know, I wonder who disagrees with that. Uh, that's such an important thing to do, uh, and I'm I'm so satisfied that that's a part of uh, the ARP. Now, thirdly. We have to make sure there are jobs available for Americans to ensure long-term economic stability. That's why $47.25 billion was dedicated to investing in economic impact disaster loans, the EIDLs I talked about, also the Paycheck Protection Program and the Restaurant Relief Program. This will help our hardest hit businesses receive funding to help them stay open uh, once they do reopen. Ultimately, these investments across the American Rescue Plan will create, as I said, 7.5 million American jobs this year alone. We don't have to wait for three years or so while they come back organically. We can jumpstart the process and we need to do that. And finally, uh, we can't get people back to jobs if we don't crush the virus. The, the whole point of this exercise, that's why getting shots in arms is vital to supporting America's health uh, and economic well-being. So that's the answer is that that's what we're doing. And Marino, uh, thank you for the question uh, uh, and God bless us. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and hope all of this works. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Marino. So we have one more question from a student and then we'll go to the Q and A's that are the questions that are coming in uh, in the Q and A tool. So our last question is from Anna Rahman. She's a junior political science major. Thank you so much representative for sharing your insight on this plan. Um, as a third year student studying political science, I've been pretty active in getting students involved in the political process. And overall, it's just so hard to believe that we ever would have lived through something like this pandemic and then get to witness a once in a lifetime legislative response that we would most likely be reading about in our history textbooks. And so with that thought in mind, um, how would you explain the political and historical significance of the American Rescue Plan? And more in particular, how will this plan impact communities of color? Anna, thank you for that. It's, it's a good question. Um, and 
uh, I often look to, to history to explain uh, what we're doing in Washington because so many people don't really think about or maybe don't even know about the full history. Um, you know, for example, um, uh, one of the things that we have done is uh, support uh, uh, theatrical venues. Okay, and, and you know, you, you hear some voices saying, why are you wasting your, your time and your money on, on uh, uh, you know, on shuttered venues? Why, why are you doing that? Uh, and, and, and why would you bother, you know, uh, paying for uh, uh, artists uh, and, uh, um, and theater companies and things like that? Why would you do that? Uh, that that's unprecedented. Well, no, it isn't. It is not unprecedented uh, we've done this we've seen this movie before Anna we, we've um, we went through a great depression I mentioned before and, and we fought our way out of it uh, and a lot of people don't realize that um, the federal government for about 11 years between 1933 and uh, 1944 you know, during the, the worst of the Great Depression and into the, the middle years of World War II, the federal government employed uh, artists and, and uh, uh, actors and uh, painters and uh, all, all sorts of the arts uh, uh, actually gave direct economic relief to those folks because they recognized they were part of the, uh, the American economy as well. Uh, and it was a great investment, by the way. I mean, you go down to the federal courthouse in Scranton, Anna, uh, do that when you get a chance, and you're going to see all of these murals uh, that were painted by artists during the Great Depression, hired by the federal government to paint these murals on the wall. And you go in there and you see these murals, and they're wonderful. They're fantastic, uh, big, sweeping things that uh, can, can hardly but fail to convey the, uh, the enormous importance of what goes on in our courthouses, the, the, the solemnity and the, uh, the, uh, the purposefulness of the delivery of justice. Uh, all of that is something that was because of direct federal economic relief to artists during the Great Depression, uh, and it still remains with us. Uh, so to say things like the shuttered venue program are, are unprecedented, that's not true. Uh, we've done it before and we did it with great success. You know, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, communities of color and thank you for that question. We have, uh, we have actually covered a number of ways already that the ARP makes up for longstanding injustices facing marginalized communities, the child tax credit uh, being one of them. Uh, that's a, a, a tax credit that does not distinguish uh, among uh, ethnic groups or races or, or skin color uh, or religions. Uh, that applies to everybody, and, uh, and that goes to uh, communities of color as well as everybody else. Um, but addressing inequalities is a constant theme throughout the American Rescue Plan. Uh, on the business aspect, for example, the first 20, 21 days of the application period for the restaurant revitalization grant was reserved for women, for veterans, or for others in socially and economically disadvantaged communities. The funding that will go to states and, uh, for business relief comes with requirements that a portion be set aside for those groups as well. Uh, but maybe one of the most sig significant ways uh, addressed by the ARP is in the area of education. The plan provides $130 billion for schools nationwide, funds that can be used to help students make up for their learning time lost when they were out of the classroom. That was a major problem in Northeastern Pennsylvania, especially in schools in our rural areas where students do not have reliable access to the internet. Um, th those are disadvantaged communities, as I see it. Remote schooling with good internet is hard to begin with. For students that couldn't even get to class, the learning time lost is significant. So there isn't one way to solve the problem, but some strategies this money can help with is extending school years or providing tutoring for students who have the furthest to catch up 
everybody has had a tough time amid this pandemic. And it's true that the gap between those who were doing well and those who were struggling before it hit uh, has only grown wider. And there's much recognition of that fact uh, in the American Rescue Plan. It's not gonna solve all of those problems overnight. Those are uh, deeply systemic problems that, that require much more thought than this, but the progress that the AR, ARP brings to them will not be insignificant. Anna, thank you for your question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. So we have a few questions that have come in the chat and one of them is actually on education. So we can stay on that topic. We have a few minutes more here um, from Vivian Williams. She's asking, will in-person learning be required for school districts who take advantage of the funding provided to them? Yeah, uh, there, are, there are a lot of um, individual uh, rules that will have to be sorted out. Uh, much of that will happen by the Department of Education uh, where the money is coming from. Uh, that's what happens. You know, uh, you, you, you get the, the fine print from uh, regulations and from, uh, uh, from administrative agency orders. Uh, and so whether they, they actually specifically require that remains to be seen. Um, I suspect that a school that makes no effort uh, to uh, restore in-person uh, tutelage uh, is, is going to have a hard time explaining that to, to the federal government. Uh, when they accept that money, but it's a good question. Okay, um, a question from Ayala Levy. She says, it's wonderful that the federal government is stepping in to support Americans, but could you explain how the ARP is being funded? Do you think the political moment is right to close tax loopholes and raise taxes for the wealthy? Right, um, actually the, um, uh, the raising of taxes for the wealthy is, does not enter into the American Rescue Plan. Uh, that is something that is being talked about uh, with respect to the, uh, the infrastructure, the Build Back, build back Better uh, part that is still working its way through the Congress. As far as the American Rescue Plan, uh, no, this was an emergency and this is all deficit funding, uh, funding that uh, that the economist said absolutely must be done. The, the thing you worry about when you do deficit funding is number one, it drives up the debt. And number two, you worry about inflation. Uh, and if you saw uh, Jerome Powell last night on 60 Minutes, he was talking about that very thing. Uh, are, are we worried that inflation will kick up when we do this, when we basically print uh, $1.9 trillion worth of relief money? Uh, he said, no, this is an emergency and this is what you do in an emergency to keep our economy alive. Uh, and, and he is not worried about inflation one little bit uh, because uh, it, it, uh, uh, it, we're so far from an inflationary period right now that, as I mentioned, all of the economists and, and Jerome Powell being one of them are, 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 are saying loudly and, and unanimously uh, we have to do this to keep our economy alive. Uh, and uh, the, the truth is, um, I, 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 we're not thrilled about doing it. If we, had our, if we had our way, we wouldn't have to go through a pandemic and we wouldn't have to rescue the American economy and none of this would be necessary, but it is necessary. We have to do it. And if you think about it, borrowing money right now is a really smart thing to do because the interest rate is so low we're in such a deflationary period right now that um, the damage from this kind of spending, uh, this kind of borrowing is much less uh, than uh, ordinary situations. And a final question is related to um, international vaccinations. Uh, the question is saying, what are the plans beyond getting shots in arms in America? What are the plans for international vaccinations? Really good question there. And, and they are looking at that because after all, it's no good. If you're going to vaccinate your entire country and protect everybody, and meanwhile, it's running rampant in other areas. And while it runs rampant, as I mentioned, the danger is that you're gonna get mutations. You're gonna get strains of virus uh, that will be developing as the, as the coronavirus, the, the COVID-19 virus, uh, runs wild in other parts of the world, you're gonna get these other strains that could come back on us uh, uh, who have already been vaccinated and, and God forbid, but it, the possibility that we worry about is that there, 
there's going to be a strain that that is not uh, protected against by the vaccines that we spent so much time and so much money uh, developing and distributing and getting the shots in arms. Uh, that would be a horrendous picture. So I know that that's what they're thinking about when they're thinking about uh, uh, exporting uh, vaccines once we're all vaccinated here in the United States. I will say though that I'm, I'm optimistic on that front as well because another part of 60 Minutes last night that I saw was that we have learned so much about how to beat uh, these viruses. Uh, we have learned so much about how, how we can quickly develop uh, vaccines against them, antibodies against them, figure out how to beat these viruses. We have got so much better through the, through the experience of COVID-19 in our scientific and our technological and our medical community uh, that we're actually, uh, uh, we have a leg up on that. We might be able to develop a, a vaccine to a new strain within as, as little as 60 days. So um, uh, again, those things are all being looked at. Uh, the idea of exporting uh, vaccines once we're, we're all vaccinated. And that may be, uh, in the end, what we do. Well, thank you so much, uh, Congressman. I know we could spend a lot more time on this, such a vast bill, but thank you so much for what you've shared today. You covered a lot of ground. If you have any final comments, we'll have to invite you back to talk about the infrastructure plan, since, of course, many of us noticed that Scranton was a stop potentially on the, the Amtrak vision for the future, but we know that there's a lot that can go into that. So uh, we can, that would be a whole other event. Um, but That's thank you so much. another 45 minutes, really. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, I'm but thrilled that we're, we're, we're taking steps to get kids back in schools and particularly University of Scranton kids because, uh, you know, uh, my wife, Marion, is a proud graduate of the University of Scranton. And she often tells me uh, uh, the, the values uh, the, the ethos that you get from the University of Scranton uh, is irreplaceable. Well, we appreciate that. And we do know the value of in-person education. So we're very grateful for those funds as Dr. Gingrich shared earlier. Thank you again for sharing your time with us today and for all the work that you do on behalf of the 8th Congressional District. Thank you. Great, Great to be with you. So long.